What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. It is another chilly day out here in Oregon. A little colder than I would like it to be, but I guess it's winter, so that's what we get. It's not raining, so I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, today should be a pretty exciting video. Um, if you've been around the channel for a little while, you'll know that I just bought a piece of property or a house on a piece of property. Um, and we're going to be going through a whole series of things, going through the property, restoring the house, an old 1940s farmhouse that is totally uh, awesome, but in need of some pretty good repairs. Um, so we're going to be going through a whole bunch of different projects with that. Today's video is going to be doing the mailbox. I'm sure you guys can probably tell by the title. Uh, we're going to be doing a bit of a uh, timber frame style mailbox. Um, I think it would look pretty darn good. I think it'll match the countryside where it's at, um, and it should be very, very stable. Um, so I'll show you guys the mailbox once we go to install the new one, but the current one is in pretty rough shape. It's just sitting on an old T-post, which doesn't look all that cool. It's functional, but it doesn't look all that good. Um, and the mailbox looks like it's probably seen a couple bats in its days. Um, it is far far from watertight at this point um, which is kind of a pain when you're getting a bunch of different paper and stuff in the mail uh, and it rains a lot here in Oregon uh, so normally this wouldn't be high on my priority list but uh, it is a little bit higher on my priority list because of those reasons uh, so plan today is to build a pretty awesome cheap and easy uh, kind of timber frame styled mailbox. It's not going to be true timber frame by any means, um, so don't hold me to those standards, uh, but it should look pretty darn good, um, look good and fit in and on the countryside. So as you see behind me, I'm not sure you guys can tell the size of these things, but these are some six by six timbers, uh, pressure treated timbers uh, that are stout. Um, I thought about doing four by fours, which is probably more common, th uh, probably what most people do. But let me show you guys the mailbox I got. Mailbox I got is here, and it is a large, large mailbox. Um, so I thought uh, four by fours would just look too small and dinky under this mailbox. Now I got this mailbox specifically because it is a locking mailbox. Um, it's kind of a security mailbox. Um, I don't really feel like going to check mail every single day. I might, but I figure I can get a large mailbox like this that's secure. And if I don't want to check mail every day, it's got tons, tons of, of room for the mail to just sit and pile up for a few days. It's locked, you can't get into it. Uh, I'm not sure you guys will be able to see this with the lighting, but there's actually, you can't reach your arm into it. That's as far as I can get my arm into it. Um, it's kind of got a block off plate here, so it's nice and secure, which is what I wanted. So that way, if I don't feel like check the mail or if I'm out of town for a period of time, I don't have to worry about it. It's not gonna over accumulate. Um, I should be good to go. So that's why I ended up going with such large timbers is because I think four by fours would just look cheap and dinky underneath a mailbox of that size. And you guys know me, I don't really do anything small. Um, so it should be a pretty exciting video. I don't wanna do a ton of talking. Um, I think I'm just gonna kind of show you guys the whole build process, not do explanations, just kind of let you guys watch, enjoy, and show you guys how I do it. And then when it's all said and done, I'll probably walk you guys through and give you guys a little bit more of a detail. It's not gonna be overly complicated at all. I think just about anybody should be able to build this. Um, and then we'll go, of course, go down to the house and put it in, hopefully tomorrow. We'll see if I can get this built tonight. Um, if not, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I think that's enough talking for now. I don't want to bore you guys, so let's get to work.
guys, there we go. The mailbox is done and installed. I think it turned out pretty darn good. I am I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I wasn't quite sure how it would work with those big old timbers. Um, maybe it would have been overkill once you got it in place and looked at it, but I think it honestly looks just about perfect. So super happy with how it turned out. I would love to know what you guys think about it. Um, I'm not showing you guys it or going to do like a walk around right now. That's why I kind of put those clips in before this. Uh, the street it's on or the street it's basically on is a pretty busy street. And so I'm not going to be sitting out there in the middle of the street with a camera. Um, not exactly safe. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the clips of the final product. I probably, I haven't done the editing yet, but I'm guessing it's going to go in right before this thing, right before this, as I'm talking now. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, let me know. Um, yeah, first time doing any sort of project like that. Um, I don't do a whole lot of woodworking stuff, not because I don't like to. Um, it's just not something I've really gotten into a lot. I would love to do more of it. And I'm sure now that I'm at this new house, um, I probably will be doing a number of more projects like that. Um, which actually, this... Uh, front door that I'm leaning on right now is the next woodworking project that was going to be taking place. It is a beautiful solid wood door. I would imagine it's the original run from 19 from the 1940s um, and overall it's in really good shape. It's a really solid door except for that area around the lock that I showed you guys last time that the lock uh, they chiseled out a bunch. It's a mortise lock so they took out a ton of the materials inside the door and then on top of that some of it has a little bit of rot around it and so in order to get new keys in it i could have gone with a new mortise lock um and thank you to you guys that told me in the comments of that video that it, they are called mortise locks i think that's what you said um i looked them up they're awesome super cool looking very uh authentic looking from the time of this house and they're also really expensive so i already have the hardware so what i'm going to be doing is going through kind of rebuilding that rotted out and cut out area on the door where all the hardware and mechanisms were um, and then going through and totally refinishing this door to make it look brand new um, i'm pretty excited about it um yeah i mean a solid a solid wood door is probably 500 something dollars nowadays and so go through put some time and effort into this um and to have the original what i would imagine is probably the original door from when this house was built in the 40s uh still on the house looking brand new i think it's pretty awesome so um, a lot of that stuff with this house i'm really going to be trying to preserve i'm going to be updating it and modernizing it but a lot of it i'm going to be trying to re or trying to preserve the history of the house um this house is 80 years old at this point um and so i would like to kind of keep that uh that era the farmhouse era in it um and so next project is this awesome front door um yeah once i get some of the uh numbers figured out on work getting done to the house then i'm going to be going to the pole building builders um, and getting some bids on what's it what it's going to take to put a shop on that property i know a lot of you guys are going to be very very interested in seeing the shop build on this property um, it's something that i have always dreamed of and i'm hoping to get it done this year i think it should be possible to have by i would say my goal would be to have it by summer or at least during summer um without a doubt before the rainy season next year but in this year i'm really going to try to get that shop built and in place um, just got to got to get some some numbers figured out because it's not a small investment building a full-size shop um, and so kind of getting that all worked out a lot of stuff in the works right now um, but a lot of exciting stuff that i'm excited to take you guys along with so like usual i'm rambling on so i'm going to call the video here as always, if you guys like the video, leave it a thumbs up. Your guys' thumbs up and liking it makes a huge difference on how much YouTube shares this content. So if you did like it, I imagine if you're this far in the video, you did, leave it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Let me know what you guys think about that uh, style of mailbox. Like I said, it wasn't exactly a timber frame style, but it does very much resemble that old rustic timber frame look. 
um, which is what I was going for, and I think it looks really good. I really like the uh, the ornate uh, ironwork underneath it. Instead of doing the typical uh, wood brace, doing that ironwork, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, and kind of goes with the timber frame style. Not exactly timber frame, bringing in some of that ironwork um, with the black bolts. I don't know, more industrial looking, I guess. Um, so let me know what you guys think about it. Um, overall, it was a pretty simple process to build. Uh, those timbers were heavy. Uh, they were probably, they were soaking wet when we bought them. So they're probably around 100 pounds a piece, six by six by eight. They were, they were big. Uh, I was struggling to move them around. Thankfully, I had family help me to get that toolbox in or to get that mailbox in place. But yeah, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you're interested in automotive stuff or stuff about this house, restoring the old 1940s farmhouse, uh, we got a whole lot more projects coming on. Uh, not even touching what we're going to be doing with the acreage on the property. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I encourage you to tag along, so hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. To all my current subscribers, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys on the next video.